Hej! God kväll och välkomna till Moderna Museet och till Carl Holmqvists utställning här hos oss som heter Give Poetry a Try. Vi har en hel del internationella gäster hos oss ikväll så vi kommer att byta till engelska. Jag hoppas att det funkar fint för alla. Uh, so, uh, we'll turn to English, uh, and I once again welcome everyone to Madame Museet and to Carl's exhibition, Give Poetry a Try, which I am uh, so pleased and honored to present to you, and I'm so happy to have Carl here. It's, I believe, a fantastic exhibition. It's a fantastic in not only in its being as an exhibition, but I also find it extraordinary and I'm happy that in fact all of the works in the two rooms which are next to us are actually now in the possession of uh, the Moderna Museet, in the Moderna Museet collection. And it might seem strange to those of you who know Carl's work, and it was strange to me when I started to learn the collection that just recently, as a matter of fact, Carl wasn't collected, collected by the Moderna Museet, and I'm so happy that we've so profoundly been able to change that situation, and that is now firmly, firmly positioned in, in our museum. Uh, and Carl's works all through the 1990s has been, to a large extent, based around text and around words and around artist books. Uh, and a lot of his work has been uh, ephemeral in some sense, uh, time-based, such as performance and readings, and uh, uh, also the printed matters has been often pamphlets and leaflets has been given away or sold for often small amounts of money and collected almost a little bit by everyone. And when we were going to make this acquisition, I was, I was presented with this challenge to to keep this qualities of his works even though bringing it into the museum whose perspective is eternity and those weird uh, things uh, and a museum full of trophies and and single unique uh, fetishistic pieces and I wanted the acquisition to be something else something that uh, didn't become that once it became into the museum, but it kept this uh, integrity as the work of Carl Holmquist. So I was very happy then in the talks with Carl to be able to uh, collect and, uh, and make an archive, which was the foundation for uh, the acquisition, which is all Carl's artist books and printed matter uh, collected from 1990 to 2012, uh, to just the recent year. So from the very, very early first stages of the, of the work to the most recent ones. Uh, and that is the core uh, of the two rooms, and it's uh, presented uh, in itself, but also through, um, through uh, PowerPoints and through the posters and through other ways of presenting uh, Carl's work that Carl himself sort of uh, gets the words from the books and out in circulation in exhibition media in other media. Uh, also free video works were um, uh, added to the collection and the big work with the stars, the string mandala works. So this is the uh, acquisition and this is, this is the, the, the show. And since it's almost a little bit retrospective in touch, uh, I think that we should start a little bit with talking about how things really started, how this work with printed matter and the word and the letters and text became such a profound and important part of your work, Carl. I don't know, I, I like uh, uh, photocopies and uh, I like uh, 
circulating things and, and uh, I, I can't remember how it started. <laughs> but you worked with, prior to, I mean, you worked as an artist even before 1990. You started by making video works and then you said uh, the images from the videos that you did sort of became only text in the video works and then you uh, started reading your works. Did you read your works already from the beginning, already in the 1990s? Were performance a big part of your work already then? Uh, I, I was doing videos and, and I was getting more and more caught up with the voiceover and uh, um, um, th th there are videos with images and they are sort of uh, having one narrative but then I thought I was always very interested in, in um, double meanings and having language. <coughs> uh, uh, drift in different directions and, and then uh, uh, the image became almost like uh, disturbing. So I, I was starting to more and more concentrate on the, on the language and the uh, possibilities of of the meaning of, of the double meanings, triple meanings, quadruple meanings of the language. And uh, uh, yeah, that's um, where I've been going. Was it already from the beginning also? Thank you. Uh, quite natural for you to um, to make your work within the context of the art world? Uh, or did you come ever from a literal world and moved your works into the art world? Or was the art field already from the beginning the scene where you felt that you belonged to and where you presented your work? It was never an ambition. It, it, I just made a lot of artist friends and was um, invited to do things in uh, galleries and uh, museum uh, lobbies and, and uh, things like that. So, so it, it kind of more uh, just happened. And uh, uh, I like to play with language and I like to explore these things, but I was never doing it in a kind of literary way. I was always doing it more <coughs> in an experimental way and, and there seemed to be more room in, in art than in literature or academia. And has your work since? You've been invited, I'm, I'm sure, into literary circles and, and events since, not so much. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you were in New York, going back to the early 1990s, you were in New York at the end of the 80s and the American language and uh, English language has always been the language with some very few exceptions and uh, you told me once about the sort of ambivalent relation that you that you had with New York and and the American culture and the English language uh, could you tell us something about that maybe through I'm with you in Rockland which is one of the uh, more um, one of the pieces in, in the show that stands out. Uh. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm using a lot of uh, quotations, so a lot of the things I'm saying in the videos and in the books is uh, from elsewhere, and it's a work about memory. It's, it's things I, uh, that pop up in my head as I try and write, and it's also um, meant to um, be recognized by the people who are uh, listening or, or reading, so they, uh, oh, I know that line, uh, where's that from? And then, then they're supposed to somehow remember that, and remember where they uh, heard that line, or, or, or and so it's, it's a, it's meant to sort of transport you back and forth between um, here and, and, and your memory and my memory and 
shared memories, and, and, and but then I'm, I'm most of the time trying to uh, um, use lines and change their meaning. Uh, I don't have an example right now, but... But, uh, uh, but take I'm with you in Rockland as one of example, for, which is a line yeah. now from, from Allen Ginsberg's poem, Howl. Mm -hmm. It's a mental institution in New Jersey. And uh, um, it's also a kind of um, um, emblematic uh, name, Rockland, uh, which seems to signify uh, pop cultural America in some sense, and uh, um, uh, all the problems and all the delights that we would have from 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 this uh, influence on on ourselves. <clears throat> and the video quite clearly expresses a sort of very ambivalent feeling about a notion about about the society which also reflects in in Ginsburg's poem in Howl in itself. <clears throat> no, and how does it in in any way relate to Howl, to Howl's relation to the America that Ginsburg was in. He, and he's, he, he's saying, I, I saw the best minds of my generation uh, wasted uh, uh, crazy. And and uh, it's partly about the Vietnam War. And um, I was saying, I saw the best minds of my generation and the best bodies of my generation wasted. So for me, it was very much uh, related to uh, early 90s and the AIDS epidemic, where, where uh, young, beautiful, <laughs> mostly men, were dying for, for, for no reason and, and without any kind of uh, um, uh, support or, or uh, attention to, to them having this happen to, uh, to them. Uh, so that's one aspect. And, and um, there was... Uh, um, the um, Gulf War, the invasion of Iraq, which was also uh, a very um, violent uh, incident happening at the same time. So, so it's it's <coughs> it's not about uh, drugs and and uh, uh, Vietnam, but it's about uh, Iraq and uh, uh, AIDS. Because you told me quite vividly when we talked about the work that it kind of, it was a strange feeling how the sensation you had with America through Howl, which was written many, many years, when you read it, when years ago when you read it, sort of still persisted that craziness and that, that complete manic state in, in New York when you were there, which I found really interesting. And Ginsburg is not the only character the only uh, artist and poet that that is present uh, in one way or the other in your work. There's the Dadaists and the Futurists and there's Grace Jones and there's Patti Smith and uh, could you say a few words about the relations in between many of these people who often also sort of keep appearing and reappearing uh, in your works? Is it How do you become a hero? How do you become into, and how do you relate to the material that you use? Is it sort of almost the same ambivalent feeling that you had with America, for example, in the English language and the English sort of attacking culture or sort of a love-hate relationship or how do you see yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, it's always love-hate, but, but uh, if, if, if you like, a song, for instance, you play it over and over, uh, and then uh, uh, it kind of pops up in your memory because you heard it a million times, and, and uh, uh, a lot of these things come from there. But then, if I'm trying to uh, 
describe something, there will be a kind of sentence coming from somewhere that has to do with what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, think about. Uh, and uh, um, also revisiting songs or revisiting uh, these kinds of things can also uh, bring a different uh, this is art, right? Uh, this is serious, so you, you can bring things into a different kind of uh, a sphere uh, through through using it as 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 an artist. And and uh, uh, this was something I, I I've been interested in. Would you consider yourself to be, to a certain degree, a political artist? Do you have political ambitions? with your way of using language, your way of using how language can be used, for example? Not so much, I'm not thinking so much about, I mean, what the language and words represent, but, but how they are used and how you use them? Uh, I, I'm a political person, I hope. I, I, I think about things and I, I'm engaged in things. and. and whether that actually transcribes into my work or not, this is not something I, I really control. But uh, uh, and uh, political art is a bit of a dead end. I mean, it, it, it's not uh, it's not something you you can think about in a very um, in a very um, productive way if you try to do if you try to make some something. But. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I hope to share my my um, stand. Uh, I hope to share uh, uh, a position, and and uh, always what I do is is also somehow a kind of uh, um, 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 uh, upmaning. <laughs> How do you say that in English? A kind of uh, uh, an encouragement for people to to to. Um, think about things and, and get engaged. So, so it's not so much about where I am as a person, but where you can go as a person when you, when you uh, listen and, and look and, and uh, uh, take part in my work. I mean, that's, that's, my, uh, that's my hope. Because I feel always when I look at your work that there's a kind of, like you say, an encouragement, an encouragement uh, to a certain degree being to uh, not find yourself in in the state where you where you find yourself so to speak uh, and be pleasant with that not to uh, accept and engage in the game and the rules that is provided to you uh, and I see that much as a metaphor with language language is full of rules and full of ways that we are supposed to use language language is very instrumental it's meant to be instrumental it's meant to be communication but that in your way of using language you kind of almost anarchically try to break away from language used as information language used as something full of rules and that you can use syntax, that you can use language, that you can put words in any kind of uh, way that you want and when does a sort of collection of letters form a word and not and when does it carry meaning and when does it not carry meaning and that there's a kind of analogy between that and between how we are uh, encouraged to uh, be citizens, for example, in a society, or how we are to use public space, how we are to walk certain paths in certain ways, and how we how we not question that so much, but we use the language the way it should be used, but we still we do, we do have the tools, and, and that your work is a kind of encouragement to use those tools of making the rules of your own game, so to speak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, should we talk about a couple of maybe you can tell us I mean, the slogan of the show or the title of the show I said a slogan because the slogan appears or the words appears again and again and again in your work uh, is give poetry a try 
it's uh, appearing not least on the wine bottles, which is actually candle holders in the in the exhibition repeatedly. Uh, would you say something about that? How? It, what does that represent to you? What's what does that mean? Give poetry a try. It's it's uh, from a bit of a way back. It, it's it's from 1990, and, and it was even before there was slam poetry. Poetry became kind of cool. I mean, it's still a nerdy thing somehow, <laughs> but there was really. Uh, You're soon you gonna see? tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> really, when I started to 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 work, yeah, shut up. <laughs> with the uh, uh, poetry, it was somehow the 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 most uh, uh, embarrassing thing you could do, and and this give poetry a try is about this. It's about it's a kind of. Uh, uh, sentence telling you to do something which uh yeah would be uncomfortable for you and uh, uh i'm not sure what was going on in art but it was also about uh having poetry enter art somehow which was also somehow now there's uh, uh jimmy durham uh, i mean vito conchi was always there this lawrence wiener uh, Jenny Holzer, I mean, there's all kinds of different people, and some of them were already there, but it, it seemed like there was a very kind of large distance between poetry and and contemporary arts. So, so uh, it's it's an honest honest um, appeal for for anyone to um, do that, to give poetry a try, and and um, one of the first things I wrote was The Raven from Edgar Allan Poe and I was doing readings of this poem and all uh, in in New York in America <laughs> and all uh, American school children learn um, The Raven by heart uh, so when I would read that sooner or later they would recognize it and they would remember uh, learning it as, as uh, uh, seven, eight-year-olds or something. So, so it was about this kind of time travel, about your memory of uh, uh, learning something and uh, um, uh, hearing it in, 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 in the present. And um, so uh, poetry, uh, try, uh, the try and, and the try in poetry, uh, if you take that away, you have Poe, which is done at Garal and Poe. So it's funny like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's almost also like a punk rock kind of slogan, no? I mean, give poetry a try. Everyone, everyone has the ability, everyone has the heart to, to do anything and to has... Uh, I guess you were a punk rocker when you, when you grew up, when you was a teenager. Has that been important to you, that kind of...? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> uh, it's also um, encouraging other people to, to, I mean, people can look at what I do and, uh, yeah, I mean, you can also get annoyed, but I mean, you can also admire it or you can think it's, it's, it's great, but it's also something which is meant to somehow, oh, I can do that, I can do that, <laughs> and this slogan, whatever we call it, uh, uh, give poetry a try, is also meant to sort of uh, 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 inspire people, inspire uh, you guys to uh, to do that and, and write your own poetry rather than to, to listen to mine. And, and that's a kind of punk heritage and, and um, uh, everything is done, there's strings, there's photocopies, there's uh, uh, laptop editing, er everything is done in a very kind of uh, uh, direct and, and simple way. I, I never uh, 
educated myself technically or, or was able to do anything super complicated. So it's, it's not about me trying to do something super impressive and, and having you be in awe of, of my technique, but it's, it's rather meant to be sort of uh, very uh, uh, simple and, uh, and direct and, and, and where someone can feel that uh, uh, they can do something similar. We talked a lot about very sort of worldly things, and before we close, before uh, we end this conversation, I want to touch on because we have a show next door, which is by Hilma of Clint, and uh, you referenced Hilma of Clint in your works before. She appears in in inside your books, and uh, there's one element in the show: these uh, stars or mandalas, uh, these geometric shapes. Uh, of different variations uh, that somehow references otherworldly or uh, more universal, uh, profound uh, experiences than the everyday sort of. Has Hilma of Clint been? In, I mean, she, obviously she's done something to you since she appears in your work, but in what way and how has she been an important figure? We talk every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's she's very courageous, and she was a very uh, um, insular figure. And uh, I, my my life is a bit more charmed. I mean, I I, I have I have a, a, I have a nice time, but but uh, I I. It's interesting to be an artist if if you uh I'm very interested in, in artists' biographies and, and uh, uh I think Hilma of Clint's life was very um um it was very strict and very um um yeah, I don't think she had a nice life. <laughs> but she was somehow uh persevering and, and um there was something there that needed to be um, uh, brought into the world, and, and uh, uh, she had the courage to to do that. And and, and that's uh, uh, whether you believe in it or not. That's not the point. I mean, it's 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 uh, uh, it's you just have to admire the the. And I don't care if she's a woman or not. I mean, it's 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 great that she was a woman uh, at the time when there was hardly any women artists. But but uh, more than that, she's a person, and a very brave person, and, and that's... Uh, um, so once again, give poetry a try. <coughs> also, yeah. <laughs> uh, I encourage you all to go into the world of Karl Holmquist and, and uh, into his works, like we said, from the beginning of the 90s to the present day. And uh, in many different forms and medias, the written language is uh, fanned out uh, to you. And one more way that you will be able to experience and, and, uh, and hear uh, Karl Holmquist's work is later in the evening, where you will where you will give a performance uh, in the bar uh, next next door here or just outside and not outside, inside still, but out of the uh, museum, museum and to the left by the stairs you will find a bar and and we look forward to join you there. What will we, have you decided? What will we hear? What will you do? Well, I mean, just come there. <laughs> just come there and you will see. So we welcome you all there, and we hope to see you also in the show and, and, and by the bar. Thank you so much for your attention and for coming. <laughs>